What's up, and welcome to the first episode of Ask Xander. It's your boy Xander. Before I get into this first video, let me just say that I know what all you guys are thinking, and I'm sorry. I'm definitely going to be more frequent with my videos from now on. Now that that's gotten out of the way, let's move on. Um, today's question actually is referring to my lock, so is asked a lot asking about my locks. Um, this comes from a um, good friend of mine who um, I've known for a short period of time, who's also a fellow YouTuber, Kay Willa. Uh, I want to thank her for that question. And she's asking me about my um, dreadlock journey. Um, she's asking me why did I start growing them? What spiritual or life lessons did I learn? How's it been working a job while being black and with dreads? Uh, how did my family, my friends, or my significant under other responded to me growing my locks out? Um, what were my biggest obstacles? Um, will you ever cut them? Do you have any regrets? Um, I'm gonna try to keep this video short. Uh, just try to cut to the point. But um, uh, let's start all the way from the beginning. Um, I started growing my hair off back in 2000, 2001. Um, I was doing the whole cornrow braid thing, you know, that my hair to grow out for sort of. Um, by the time 2002 rolled around, at that time I was ready to start cutting my hair up. Um, I had been getting my hair braided, you know, daily cutting my hair, staying that out. And that's how it was. I mean, this started back in high school. So that's kind of where it started from. Uh, like I said, 2002 hit. And that's when I was just like, you know what? Time to get my dread thing going. So switching my hair up and going on like that. Um, the reason why I started growing my hair, simply put, a lot of my friends convinced me to. I was seeing a girl at the time who had dressed herself, and she had convinced me that I should go out. Um, for a while, I resisted. You know, I figured, you know, I was cool getting hair, to get my fade, get my part, and all that stuff. But um, after a while, I was just like, you know what? Why not? I'm going to start letting my hair grow out and, you know, get the whole lot. So that's kind of how So it was more so like, As far as spiritual lessons is concerned, um, those didn't really come until later on down the line. Um, most of you don't know me, and those who don't will know that I am not a religious person. Um, I've never been, I'm not a fan of organized religion in any way, shape, or form at all. I consider myself to be a spiritual person. I do believe in the Creator, I do believe in God, but I don't believe in so, the me growing my hair out kind of, you know, reaffirmed me of that belief. That, um, at the end of the day, you know, it's all about being who you are and being a good person. It doesn't mean, you know, this religion says that, you know, I gotta observe the Sabbath. This religion says I can't eat this or eat that. This religion says I have to fast for 30 days and stuff like that. Not trying to, you know, shit on anybody's religion or anything. That's not what I'm trying to do at all. But what I'm just saying is, at the end of the day, all the religions are, for the most part, doing the same thing. They're worshiping the one being, which is the creator. So I don't know why the division. I guess it's to feel cool or something. I'm not sure. As far as life lessons is concerned, I did learn a few life lessons growing my hair out. Well, number one of them is patience. Um, those of you who have have been a part of the lock nation or those who are just starting out the locking process that is one thing you'll have to understand it takes time and patience you know to get to where you want to be your your hair is not going to lock up right away unless you have that kind of hair my hair didn't lock up that, right, that that fast my hair is really different you know as opposed to my brothers and sisters or anybody else i know 
you know, it can be very long. I, I guarantee you that if I really wanted, if I hadn't dreaded my head up, it would look long like Indian hair or something like that. But, you know, that's just me. But, um, you know, with patience, you know, they usually say it takes uh, about six months to a year for your hair to lock up. You know, I just basically waited it out. A lot of people can jump in to the transition of, you know, having dreadlocks because they don't have the patience for it. That is one thing that's, I mean, not to say that I was an impatient person before because I never was, but I just gained more of an understanding of patience and understanding the process of how things are done. You know, and I think it's because I went through this that I was able to transition into other parts of my life. You know, I'm the type of person that I don't make a decision unless everything everything is examined. I don't rush into anything. You know, every decision I make is a calculated, thought out decision to make sure that everything goes the way I want it to go. I, I believe the rules of carpenters one of the golden rules of carpenters and people who work in construction is measure twice, but cut once. One more time, measure twice, but cut once. That means double check, triple check, quadruple check to make sure what you have is correct before you even put that nail to wood. And that is the same thing that I've adopted in my life. You know, so one of the, again, so patience is one of the main life lessons that I learned, learned in transitioning over to the Dreadlock Nation. Um, I wouldn't have had it, had it any other way, to be honest with you. So that's just one. There's a whole bunch of life lessons that, you know, you'll be judged pre, you'll be prejudged. You know, people will try to make determinations of you because you have, you know, this kind of hair, you know, and, and it's whatever, you know, you learn to roll the punches and um, basically assert yourself in who you are. Um, as far as work goes with having dreads, I haven't had too many issues with that. Um, I've been lucky enough to have, you know, jobs where my hair wasn't a factor, you know, is what I can do at the job. That's the most important part. You know, I've had jobs while I had an Afro, while I had braids and stuff, while I had haircuts, you know times where I didn't shave for a while, you know, I was clean cut, you know, it all depends on where your work environment is. You know, I was lucky enough that every work environment I've had up until, up until this point has been one where my hair, you know, wasn't really a factor. Now, granted, that doesn't mean I just let my hair just go all over the place. I do like to keep it clean. I would like to, you know, keep it nice and tight and stuff like that you know i don't just let my hair run wild unless i really feel and feel the need to i'll just let my hair go let it get some air i won't style it you know put nothing in it i'll just keep it on as it is but as far as that stands you know there hasn't been too many obstacles as far as work you know being a black guy and a person with dreads you know that that almost should be two strikes against you but you know, at this point, I think dreadlocks have become more than norm now. You know, when I started growing my hair, I was going to have the point where everybody was growing their hair out. You know, I don't know what it was. It was like some kind of, it was some big hair boom that popped up when I was in high school. Everybody was growing their fro out. Everybody was getting braids. Everyone was getting locks. Everyone was going, you know, the natural route. You know, and to a degree, it still kind of exists right now. But right now, the whole big thing is the natural look now. That is a big wave right now, which I'm very proud of. I, I accept that wholeheartedly, and I wish more people would go that way, especially, you know, my black brothers and sisters. I hope more people go that way. Um, my family, didn't really have, I, it should probably be noted that I am Jamaican. I was never born there, but my parents were. That's where all my family is from. So this is nothing new to them you know they grew up around this you know i have cousins i've had cousins that you know are locked up you know i mean dread locked up you know so and you know it wasn't a it wasn't a big to do for them my friends you know i mean for for a good amount of time you know before i locked up you know people were you know amazed about how big my fro would get you know 
my hair grows pretty fast. So, you know, I would walk around the school and be like, everybody recognized who I was because of my hair. You know, it essentially became a part of me, you know, so my friends didn't really have an issue with my hair. In fact, they enjoyed the fact that I had such long hair. Significant others, not not too many issues with that either. Um, I did have one that um, preferred that I went back to braids, but I told them, you know, this is what I want to do. I don't tell you what to do with your hair, you know, so this is how I'm going to do it, you know. Most recently I had, um, I mean, I got into a relationship with someone that said that they normally don't date dudes with dreads, but, you know, they made an exception. You know, I mean, there's a stigma for everything, so you gotta learn to, again, roll with the punches. But, you know, I've dated girls that, you know, were all natural. They had furrows, one had dreads, you know. You know, to me, it's all good, you know. So my thing is, if you can't look past a person's external presentation, then, you know, there's something wrong with you, there's nothing wrong with me, so, you know, fuck it. Um, the biggest obstacle, I guess, is being maybe categorized, because, you know, like I said, it was a big hair boom, so everybody and their mother was growing dreads out, you know, and I know a lot of these celebrities like Lil Wayne and, you know, a couple of the other rappers, you know, they have dreads. So, and I think that's why a lot of the other people started growing their hair out, you know, so it became an association with that type of, you know, group, you know, I've never associated myself with that type of group, you know, I don't really listen to rap like that. You know, me growing my hair out was because, you know, it's in my blood, it's part of my roots, you know, so it had nothing to do with, you know, the hip hop, you know, scene or anything like that. That's just what I did. So, you know, and then there's been other times where it's just like, you know, people have looked at it. I mean, people still today look at dress like a messy ordeal going on on top of somebody's head. You know, I've had people say that you might want to think about cutting it because, you know, if you're going into a certain workplace and all this other stuff. I'm like, listen, if they can accept the fact that I have long hair, and that I choose to keep it nice and tight, then, you know, it is what it is, you know, so um, that doesn't mean I'm just gonna lop off my locks just to get this certain job, you know, I'll create a job before I even do that, you know, you know, I've seen people look worse than me, you know, get a job somewhere, so, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really make much of a difference, you know, you can't so you can't be so quick to associate this look with something else. You know this is this is an this is an ancient look. I like to say dreadlocks are an ancient thing. You know they've existed for centuries. So you can't sit there and tell me that because of a certain job or a certain work environment that I should lock cut my hair off. It's not going to happen. Um, there's been a few times though where I have thought about it maybe thought about, you know, cutting my hair off, you know, figuring, you know, maybe I could just go back to get my hair cut. You know, it's simple, it's clean, you know, doesn't really cost that much or take that much time to do, you know, it's simple enough, you know. But then it's like, you know what, I spent a good amount of time going to home. Like I said, I've been I've been locked up since two thousand two by the dread. My dreads have been locked since two thousand two. And it's two thousand fifteen now I've kept my hair in for this long of a period of time. So, it's at this point, it's like, you know, I don't see myself cutting off anytime soon. Maybe later on down the line, maybe I would cut it. And if I did, it would probably only be to the effect of maybe starting over and redoing it again. I've had a lot of friends, you know, cut their dreads off because they got tired of the style. I've had friends that have cut their hair off only to start again and start the right way. You know, my thing is, if you can maintain it, you know, why just let it go just like that? You know, you can keep hanging it on. Um, as far as it stands, I have no regrets at all for growing my locks out. I, um, like I said, it's become a part of who I am. It's not, it's not just a style 
anymore. For some people, it's a it's a style. For me, it's it's me. It's my signature look. People recognize me mainly by how my hair looks, and then you know it just goes off from there. It's become a part of my identity, my hair, which should be for anybody. Anything that's a part of your body should become who you are. It's your identity. Whether it be your hair, your eyes, the way your lips are shaped, the way your body is shaped, you know, it becomes your identity, becomes who you are. So my hair is not, it's just not something that's on my, it's, it's who I am. This is my hair, you know, so, I mean, just to give you uh, just a few instances, I mean, you know, I, as of the beginning of the summer, I've decided to start retwisting in my own hair again. For a while, I was, you know, locking, I was uh, going to a hair salon to get my hair done. When I first started out, I did it by myself. Um, I went to a hair salon, they twisted it up, and um, when I went back to Florida, because I lived in Florida for a few years, I just did it on my own from that point up until the time I came back to New Jersey. Um, my dad did have a friend who herself and her kids had dreadlocks. And she taught me a new locking technique. So I was going to her for a short period of time before I came back up. I came back up. I was doing, I did my hair for a little bit before I started going to a salon again because I found myself not really having the time to do it on my own. But um, the main reason why I stopped going to a salon, not only to save money, but the simple fact that, you know, certain salons, well, most salons, Usually, they don't use beeswax, you know, they use styling gel or whatever. And, you know, your hair is good for like a short period of time. But, you know, like for me, me for, for example, you know, I'm a karate instructor and a karate practitioner, you know. So, I sweat all the time. And, you know, styling gel and sweat do not mix, as you know. So... I get a style or I get my hair twisted up within like the next couple of days or so it's starting to unravel and like that's no good that's almost a waste of money so I just decided you know once July hit I said you know what I'm just gonna start you know retwisting my own hair again like I did in the beginning I'm just gonna carve out time to just do it and I found that I was able to do it a lot faster than when I was at the salon you know I wash my hair on nice and thoroughly, dry it off, sit down, get the um, beeswax and twist it up. I'm done in an hour. You know, that's a hell of a lot less time than it would be uh, sitting at a salon on their hair dryer, falling asleep. And then, you know, just sit there, you know, they just pull and style it up with just gel. No good. You know, I twist my own hair, but it lasted for a good couple of weeks until I decided to wash it again. So. You know, so that's what I pretty much decided to do. Um, at the end of it all, I I am definitely proud of my dreadlocks, no matter what anybody says. You know, it's who I am, it's what I've been about. It's connected me more to the spiritual side of things. It's helped me to understand a lot of things about myself and about, you know, the people around me. And at no point will you ever see me without it, unless... I decide that it might be time to move on or, you know, I want to try it again, start over, you know, we'll see. But truth be told, I can't wait to see, you know, my dreadlocks turn gray. That's going to be a cool thing for me. So that's how it goes. Um, what I want to do is leave people with some advice. If you are well into the uh, dreadlock nation, you know, keep going. Don't, don't don't stop you know unless it's just a style for you or something like that you know don't be so quick to cut them off you know hang on to them they they, they they mean something you know they become a part of who you are so don't let them go if you are just starting out and I mean not just dreading not just locking your hair up but I'm talking going natural be patient is what I can say just be patient trust the process you know, don't be so quick to just give up. It takes time, especially if you're locking your hair. It takes time. At the same time, it's a good time to try a few things out. You can try different styles while in the meantime, you know, tr just trust the process. It, it takes time, but 
at the end of it, you'll be the better for it, you know. So that concludes the first episode of Alexander. Uh, I appreciate Kay Willow for submitting this question to me about my hair. It's actually something I don't really ever really talk about because, you know, it's dreadlocks. You know, everybody kind of just has an idea of what you do or whatever. But, you know, it was, I'm glad to have talked about it and let people, let people in on what it's like to, you know, have this type of hair. You know, don't just automatically look at someone who has just dreadlocks and think that they're dirty or they're some kind of playboy or something. You know, for some people, it's more than that. You know, it's a it's a part of who they are. It's not just about how they look. It's all really a part of who they are. So, you know, don't just, you know, second guess them or anything like that. Um, um that's pretty much it. Um, I'm pretty proud of myself. I kept it under 20, kept it within 20 minutes. You know, going on 21 minutes. I know my videos are usually pretty longer than this, but I'm trying to keep it short and sweet. So that's what's going on right now. If you have any more questions, whether it be you have a question relating to relationships, you know, consci conscious thing, consciousness things, any question that you want to have me answer, all you have to do is like the video, share the video, subscribe to my channel. You can find me on Twitter at Darkness Night. Use the hashtag Ask the Locks, and I will get your questions there. You can find me on Facebook. Um, you can submit your questions there too. You can even submit your questions right down below in the comment section. All right, I welcome any and all questions, and I will answer them as honestly as I possibly can. All right. Also, what I would also like for you guys to do is, if you, if you're a part of the natural hair movement or the Dreadlock Nation. Comment below and tell people what your experiences was like, you know, growing your hair out or locking your hair up. You know, my experiences was one way. My experience may not be your experience. So share with everybody. Let people know what what it's like, you know, going a natural route. You know, it's not always a bad thing. You know, just you know, you know, just um get it out there, alright? Um other than that, um I thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, like I said, I plan to be more frequent with my videos. Um, look for a couple of um, reaction videos once I learn how to do reaction videos. Um, look for a couple of reviews. I am actually still playing Batman Arkham Knight right now. It's been like a job and a half. Um, I'm actually in the process of doing all the other side missions before I actually decide to finish out the game because I want the true Nightfall Protocol ending. So. It's been a while, it's been a process. Um, essentially what I'll start doing, I'll start recording some of my gameplay so you guys can see how well I am as Batman. You know, um, um, the next game, I get it probably won't be later on down the line, it's just Tekken 7 and Street Fighter 5. So look for, you know, reviews and gameplay on that as well. I've caught a couple movies within the past couple of weeks. I saw Terminator Genesis. I saw Ted 2, I saw San Andreas, um, I know Ant-Man is coming out, well it's, well it's midnight now, so Ant-Man is coming out today, so I may go see that this weekend, and I'll try to give a review on that, as well as reviews on Terminator Genesis, San Andreas, Ted 2, and a couple of the movies that, you know, I might have seen within the past couple of weeks or so. So again, like, share, subscribe, you know, and hopefully... You guys have a question for me real soon. I'll talk to you later. Peace.